The idea of creating some kind of behind-the-lines German resistance organization originated with Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler. The original concept was something akin to Otto Skotzeny's commandos, highly trained and well-armed uniform formations, rather than Nazi partisans. Himmler chose SS Obergruppenführer Hans Adolf Potsmann to oversee the organization in autumn 1944 after the German defeat in Normandy had apparently shown him the writing on the wall for Nazi Germany. Interestingly, the Allies were thinking along the same lines as Himmler, and US analysts reported in January 1945 that the Germans were preparing stay-behind forces in preparation for the Allied invasion of Germany. The British and Americans were fairly concerned about a protracted guerrilla campaign behind their lines. Further proof of German intentions seemed to be confirmed when Propaganda Minister Dr. Goebbels made a fiery speech to the German people on the 23rd of March 1945. This speech became known as the Wehrwolf speech, when Goebbels exhorted every German to fight to the death against the invader. The Propaganda Ministry organized Radio Wehrwolf, which began broadcasting on the 1st of April 1945. The show was opened with the sound of a wolf howling and exhorted fighting to the death. These broadcasts unsettled Allied forces further, making troops mistrustful of German civilians. General Putzmann apparently took some measures to turn Himmler's and Goebbels' idea into a reality. A Wehrwolf central training centre was established at a castle near Erkelenz, training batches of 200 older Hitler youths and some SS volunteers in each intake. Each regional Gauleiter was ordered to draw up lists of potential recruits for the Wehrwolves, who were then to be trained at locations in the Rhineland or around Berlin. The entire force numbered apparently about 5,000, but they were short of weapons, equipment and training. Some caches of weapons and explosives were created, but most were found by the Soviets or the Allies while the organization broke down into unrelated or coordinated cells or even individuals who committed some acts of sabotage or assassination against the Allies. The Americans arrested several cells that claimed to be part of Wehrwolf, groups of servicemen hiding out in remote places, some with US uniforms and kit. But it is clear today that Wehrwolf was really more of a propaganda success than a physical reality. Some operations have been claimed as Wehrwolf activities. In March 1945, Himmler ordered the assassination of the American-appointed mayor of Aachen, Franz Oppenhoff, who was duly dispatched by an SS hit squad on the 25th of March. Most assassinations and attacks were in reality conducted by regular German troops or SS in battle conditions, but Goebbels' Wehrwolf radio was happy to claim responsibility in order to sow alarm and confusion in the Allied ranks. Unfortunately, this resulted in reprisals by Allied troops that, according to historians, killed between three and 5,000 Germans. Collective punishments, fines and curfews existed in West Germany until 1948. In East Germany, it was far worse. The Soviets branded all Hitler youths as potential Wehrwolves, and more than 10,000 were sent to special camps, hundreds were shot, and in one horrendous case, an entire town, Demin, was burned down, resulting in hundreds of suicides among the population. By the end of 1945, the United States herded 100,000 German civilians into basic camps as a security measure to prevent Wehrwolf activities, the British also mounting reprisals when Wehrwolf activities were suspected. In the final analysis, Himmler's idea of a uniformed army behind Allied lines failed to materialize. Dr. Goebbels' effective propaganda ensured that the paranoid Allies and Soviets came down hard on any German who resisted citing the Wehrwolf organization as the reason. Goebbels only succeeded in unnecessarily killing yet more Germans when the war was almost over. Wehrwolf was, in the final analysis, a complete failure.
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also support my channel at PayPal or Patreon. Details in the description box below.